visiting my alma mater where I studied for four years. It's been a while since I've graduated and they've made a lot of changes and updates, especially the athletic complex. They made a new facility with new track, new fields and everything, so I'm really excited to see that. This is Woodlawn and I lived here my freshman year. I had a double all to myself and unfortunately it didn't have any air conditioning, but it worked out for my freshman year and I just went up from there. Our famous Wally Witt. This is the student center where a lot of activities happen. The mailroom was in the basement, founders, the game room. Everything's closed, but school hasn't technically opened yet. In this enclosure was the game room. They had TVs, Playstations, Xbox, everything. It was really cool to go down there with your friends and play games. Across the way is a university style pub called Founders. They serve drinks, wings, anything like that. And every Wednesday they had trivia nights and sometimes some comedy shows. Also, you could find the bookstore in Post 95. Wow, this looks like a completely different bookstore than when I was here. And upstairs is where a lot of people ate when they were a freshman or sophomore, and it's called the CDR. We had to take our ID card and get it swiped, and then we could eat everything we wanted. This is my favorite dorm. It is called New Hall because it's relatively the newer dorm on campus. I lived here my sophomore year and was an RA, so I had a single all to myself, and I made a lot of friends. It was co-ed, and I have a lot of memories in that dorm. This used to be the student housing office and I worked here my freshman year as a student worker. This is Polis, an international dorm, and I lived here for a semester before I studied abroad in Japan. This is Tower Hall. I was an RA here my senior year and because of its 11 floors, you know why it gets its name. Right next to Tower is Firestein Hall, which is where most of the athletes and football players lived. This is my old stopping ground, but what's really new is this. Can't wait to see inside. Heading into the rec center and hopefully it connects to the new athletic complex. Fitness centers stay the same. Well, they redid this gym for sure. This used to be super old and this is where we actually had some indoor practices and it's completely redone. Down here used to be the weight room, so we'll see how much that changed. Looks like downstairs is now the athletic training center. So now we're just trying to find our way around. Apparently it's back towards the entrance. Oh, oh, I found the weight room. It looks nice. I don't even know what half this equipment is, but good for them for getting it. Now, the moment we've all been waiting for. This place is amazing. I wish I had this when I was in school. The steamer is a state-of-the-art 265,000 square foot indoor practice facility. It includes a six lane, 300 meter track and an artificial turf that can accommodate football, soccer, lacrosse and field hockey. The turf feels nice and squishy. I am thoroughly impressed with the new facility. I am super jealous of all the athletes and people who get to use this in the future. It looks like they redid all the gym floors. This is Hollenbeck Hall and I've spent a lot of time in this building. The teachers' offices have changed a little bit since I've been here last, but in essence everything is still the same. The writing center used to be right here and I went there to get my papers checked. I printed them over here in the computer lab. This is the language learning center and you can get tutored in foreign languages. I remember having some classes in there and that was cool because it was kind of isolated from everyone and kind of in the middle. Kind of like a goldfish where everyone could see you. In this auditorium was where I had my WIT freshman seminar and also a ton of performances for the East Asian Studies Club. We're entering the Science Center. I did not take a lot of classes in science, so I wasn't in this building as much. I think I had a geology class and a math class in this building. I do love the way the lobby is set up though. It's very nice and open. They even have a little concession stand usually over here, and that's where I would get some snacks on my way to class. We came in on the second floor of the science building and came out the first. So this is the front. And now we're going down the hill towards the art building and on the way is the observatory. Now I've never been in it, but there are some nights where it's open and you can go in and see the stars. Now this is the art building and I have spent numerous nights in here doing a lot of art projects. Unfortunately, it's not open, but there are three levels. On the top floor is the computer lab and photography area. And the bottom is mostly gallery space and offices. Zimmerman Hall is up the way, but I didn't have a lot of classes in psychology, which is mainly what that building is for. This big beautiful building is the registrar, and so new students and new parents can see it, and it's definitely an eye catcher for all the new people coming on campus. We're coming up to a building called Carnegie Hall, and that's where the business and economics used to be, at least when I went to school. But then after I graduated, they moved up to Hollenbeck, 
So now I'm not really sure what this building is for, but I just remember it being super hot because there was no air conditioning. Right next to Carnegie Hall is the commencement area. Unfortunately, during my graduation, it was a little rainy. If you cross the kissing bridge, you make your way towards another dorm. This one's called Ferncliff. Now I never lived here, but when I was an RA, our two dorms were kind of combined with the same CA, and we had meetings here often. This is the base of campus, and it leads you right up to the fountain, where you can continue up the hill all the way up to Hollenbeck. In the middle of campus is the infamous seal. Legend has it that if an undergrad touches it before they graduate, the first time, a bad grade. The second time, fail a class. The third time, you get expelled. So no one touches it and everyone avoids it. And once you graduate, you're allowed to step on it. This building is also really iconic to Wittenberg. It is Myers Hall, a place where you could also live. This building is special because it was the first building constructed back in 1845. Weaver Chapel is one of the most beautiful buildings and contains spectacular stained glass windows. It was even featured in National Geographics. We had a lot of award ceremonies located in here and it's just gorgeous. Now I know they did some renovations to the library so I'm excited to see what's new. Mainly because they added a Starbucks or a little cafe inside so you could get food in there instead of walk outside to go to the cafeteria. I think they updated the chairs and it's way more roomy. And then back there is the little cafe. It just looks more welcoming, I think. Looks like they added a new section, the compass. I'm not sure what they do there, but obviously to benefit the students. I guess the Compass Center is a one-stop collaborative learning support center based on the sign. Close to the library is another building called Blair Hall. That's the education building where you want to become teachers and educators. Here are the Adirondack chairs. They're located everywhere and you can just move them around and enjoy the scenery. This is Alumni Way and it's mainly for pedestrians. It's called Alumni Way because when you graduate, you can buy a brick, put your name, and the year you graduated on it. Further down is off-campus living and apartments, as well as a building where they do music classes. Speaking of off-site living, there's also fraternities and sororities sprinkled around campus. This is what's known as the hollow. Basically a big open space where you can hang out, play frisbee golf, or good for sledding. Wittenberg was founded in 1845 and is located in Springfield, Ohio. It is relatively a small campus and is 114 acres. Someone can make it across campus in about 10 minutes, depending on how fast they're walking. It's weird being back on campus. A lot has changed, but I'm glad I got to revisit it and see some old teachers that are still here and see all the new things that have changed.